Hey everybody, you have not seen my face in a video for a very long time. I really struggled at the end of last year with whether or not I wanted to continue doing planner videos on my channel in addition to the planner related content that you have seen from me for about six years now. I did decide I wanted to try again and start adding in homeschool content. So if you are one of my planner fans, please do not fear. That will not change my planning schedule, my planning videos at all. I'm just simply going to try to add in some homeschool related content. So hopefully you will stick around, even if you are just a planner person, to maybe get to know me a little better and find out more about my life because homeschooling is a huge part of who I am and the things that I do right now. And you see that a lot in my planners. Well, one of my favorite videos to watch personally are ones about people's morning baskets. So I am going to share with you guys what we are currently doing and what we consider our morning basket. Now, a morning basket um, started out very specifically and has kind of evolved to the point where people really um, don't just do it in the morning. You don't just need a basket to put your things in and there is no specific prescription for what can be in your morning basket. So here is what we have in ours right now. Uh, real quick, I should probably mention that my children, my five children, all participate in morning basket, at least at the beginning, because I have decided that the best time for us to do this is at breakfast. So I make breakfast for my kids. We all sit down around the table and I get started with our Bible. Now, my kids are ages nine, eight, five, almost four, and two. So the younger ones get a little bit with us as they sit there and eat their breakfast and then they can go off and play and do fun activities, which I'll do in a separate video. But the resources I'm using right now for Bible are this book that I picked up at a thrift store and it is called More Stories About God's People. And this is actually, I found out later when I was looking at it closely, it's a book from Broad and Staff, which is a curriculum company. And I just really like, it's kind of easy reader style. And I like how it retells the stories that you find in the Bible. So we'll read a page or two of this. Another one that I have just found is this one here called Training Hearts, Teaching Minds. And this is a question and answer book similar to a catechism, but different than um, the Catholic catechism, but it's very similar to that if you've ever heard about that. So we um, go through it and it is set up. Let me show you inside. I have no idea. Are these all backwards for you guys? I didn't think about that when I started because um, I have to film in selfie mode on my phone, which is how I film these videos for you guys. So I'm really hoping that this is not backwards for you. But if it is, I will have all of this listed down below and hopefully you can still get the general idea. So as the question and the answer, and then it has by the day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I think it goes through Saturday. It does. And it just gives a little paragraph of like a family devotional style describing that question and answer. I love it. It's so brief. It's so basic. It doesn't take too long. And so we read, uh, if it's Monday, we read Monday and we don't worry about um, missing part of the chapter because we don't do school or read this book on a Friday or a Saturday, for instance, um, that has not been an issue and works really well. Now we actually use the Good and the Beautiful Musical Multiplication, but that is a digital download on my phone, which I can't show you because I am filming on my phone but I hook up our really nice Bose speaker. I play the set for whichever, you know, one we are on, we're currently on C. We listen to the multiplication and then I made these review cards as a way to remind my kids that, let me see if I, I've mixed them up. Um, here's a good example. To remind my kids that eight times five and five times eight are the same problem with the same answer and they the way the songs go in musical multiplication is you learn one song one little itty bitty song per math fact so you don't do five times eight as a song and then later eight times five so I wanted to really connect it with my kids that the reverse is also true and as they actually do their math they could come across it written either way depending on the problem so we kind of go over these a little bit 
Let me see. Another Bible related resource that I have used is this little prayers and poems, children's Bible stories. And I picked this because it was easy memory work. So let me flip to the one we just finished. It's just a picture and a little poem. And we memorized it. It took us about two weeks to get the whole thing. And I just have to share this story. This was so stinking cute. Remember how I said that all of my kids are sitting at the breakfast table together, at least for the beginning. And so my two-year-old is there during Bible. That's the first subject we do. So we get to this book fairly quickly. And we had been practicing this and it has motion. So it's like, God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. And then it goes on from there. Well, last night at the dinner table, one of my kids was like, daddy, daddy, let me tell you this poem. So she started to quote this and my two-year-old started doing the motions and she knew what we were talking about. And it was the most precious thing in the world. She doesn't speak very well yet, even for a two-year-old. She's a, she was a preemie baby. So she's a little delayed in, in her speech, but she knew the motion. She understood what we were saying and little kids even pick up more than you think. And that was just one of those wonderful homeschooling moments that I live for. So all of my kids, including my three-year-old, I kind of say it with him and do the motions with him, but he can do many of the words. This was a lot of fun and we have moved on. We are now doing the Lord's Prayer. And this is kind of like the King James version with hallowed be thy name and trespass and things like that. So it's been fun to do that version. So those are the resources that we're using for Bible time. Um, another resource that is amazing is a website called, I believe it's celebratekids.org and they offer hymn of the week resources and materials. So this month of February, we have been doing Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. And again, I just plug this in, play the song off of my phone and we have been enjoying that. Okay, another subject that we have been doing is Spanish this year, and we are using this curriculum from, I think it's Cherrydale, yes, Cherrydale Press. It's called Speaking Spanish with Miss Mason and Francois, and it's a really cute approach to Spanish. Um, and even though it's a super small book, you're really designed to go super slow through this, and honestly, to have it take you a year, two, or even three but this is the physical printed words that I reference. And then it is another thing where I have digital downloads on my phone and I play them off of that. We listen on our speaker and we practice our Spanish. Let's see, what else have I gotten here? We are doing a poet study. I found this book at the library on Impulse and I decided to get it and use it as basically our curriculum. It is the Poetry for Young People and this is Robert Frost. What I absolutely love about this is in the beginning is a couple of pages of biography. So there's I think one more page. And so I read like a paragraph maybe and then we review and we read a couple of the poems. And what I absolutely love are the beautiful illustrations. So this is just an amazing book and I'm really excited. We're almost done with February. We'll probably continue on through February finishing this book. And then I'm going to find another one in this series and move on to another poet, which is awesome. What else do we do? I'm using my <laughs> planner over here. If you didn't see it, it's already been published on my YouTube channel. I did a detailed walkthrough of my homeschool planner and I have a little cheat sheet in here about what we do in our morning basket because even though I have all the books beside me, sometimes I do forget to like play the hymn or play the multiplication song. So this is like my guide as I go through. When we are done with those subjects, we usually move on to our history. So I feel like history does not need to be fast paced and you also don't need to start super young. So last year was one of our first real years where I, I committed to doing history with my older two kids who were at the time were like what, six and seven, uh, like six years old and eight years old. 
Um, so this year we, or so that year we only did half of this book. We did units one and two. This is history year one from the good and the beautiful and it has four units. So we did two units last year spread out over the course of the entire school year. And so this year I just wanted to continue on. So we did units three and we finished that in December right about Christmas break. So we took all of Christmas break off. And then unit four, we flew through. My kids are loving history now. So I know that by next year, especially for my older two, we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to plan a lot more. So I don't know what my plan is. We just finished yesterday or the day before. I don't know. We have a good three to four months of school left. So that's a long time. And I think I need to figure out something else. And I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know. We'll see, I have some ideas. This just goes along with it, but both of those are in our morning basket. And actually, I can take them out now. The last subject we do as a group is science. So I cannot show you the actual uh, kind of textbook. It's not even a textbook, but the main spine of our curriculum because it was a digital download. So I whip out my laptop computer at this point and I pull up the PDF file that I purchased from The Good and the Beautiful for the Marine Biology Unit Study, and I read some of that. Um, I do recommend, now that I've tried it as a PDF, it's very difficult. So unless you wanna put the money into printing the full color pages on your own, which you're really gonna save money, just if you buy it um, already bound, they have very reasonable pricing at The Good and the Beautiful. It's one of the things I love about that curriculum. They're not trying to make money, they're trying to get beautiful curriculum into our hands and cover costs and a little bit of expenses. Um, so I highly recommend actually purchasing a unit, but I'm glad I tried it and I am bringing in a ton of other resources. So this year I really made a commitment I wanted to read. I wanted to just fill my children's lives with books. And this is how I get my younger children, especially, who sometimes are still sitting around the table with us, playing with activities, coloring, Play-Doh, things like that. And I have gotten a ton of ocean-related, marine biology-related books. So there was like this one called The Little Island. This one is an Usborne book that somebody gave me. I'm pretty sure you can't even get this anymore. It's so old. Um, it was Mysteries and Marvel, Marvels of Ocean Life. This was a hide and seek science. Where's that fish? And I seriously have like 20 books on hold at the library. I need to pick some of them up. They're ready for me. And I can go get those because I just got a ton more books. Pinterest is your friend if you're looking for living books on particular subjects. So moms who have done it before have made book lists. Oh, here's a couple more at the bottom of my stack. So this one is um, the Smithsonian Ocean, a visual encyclopedia. Sorry, my feet are falling asleep the way I'm sitting. <laughs> uh, a visual encyclopedia. We just really look at the pictures in that. It's something beautiful to look at while I'm reading maybe something else. And then I found this one. This is the story of oceanographer Sylvia Earle, Life in the Ocean. And this is awesome because it's a picture book. So love, love, love that one. And then I was just feeling like I wanted something that my kids could do with their hands and my older two um, to feel like they were doing some work along with it. So I found from first grade centers and more, pretty sure I bought this off Teachers Pay Teachers, an ocean lap book. So here are some of the pieces. They started coloring them yesterday. We haven't even started cutting them out yet. It's an entire lap book. So we will really focus next week on reading the read alouds, the picture books and whatnot that I had, that I'll have from the library by then, and really focusing on starting to put together the lap book. And then we'll jump back into kind of the text from The Good and the Beautiful and sort of finish it out. And that is officially the end of our morning basket. I will say though, um, one thing we do at lunchtime when we're all sitting down is our audiobook. Now I love to read aloud to my kids, but I just was feeling strained and like the juggling being a mom and taking care of little ones and also doing the homeschool that I had to delegate something and finding quality audiobooks is a great one. So I just use our library card. I use the app Libby and the app Hoopla, which go with your library card and you can borrow quality audiobooks. So we just today 
not even but a few hours ago finished Little House in the Big Wood. That one did not take us very long. We loved it so much. We just kept doing an extra chapter here and there. And so once again, during lunchtime, I pull out my trusty bows. I use the apps from my phone and I listen along with my kids, but I can eat my lunch, make my lunch, clean up the kitchen, fold laundry, or do something else as well while it is you know, reading aloud to my kids. So I kind of consider that part of my morning basket. And I try to fit sometimes what book we are reading aloud or listening to aloud with a theme that we are studying in history or science or something like that. This particular example, it was just a fun one I thought we would read. But now that we finished it, now that we're getting ready to start a new unit or of some kind in history, um, our next read aloud may go along with whatever I choose for that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I love making um, these kinds of videos, especially let me know what kind of homeschool related content you would like to see regularly and coming up on my channel by just dropping me a comment down below. And I hope you'll stick around and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.